Today is July 20th, 2015, and this is the first video that I'm going to upload to 10,000 people. Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to make my new app that's actually on the App Store right now called SpitSpot. Now I posted a video about a week ago on circular shooting, and now I'm actually going to take that video and go further into it and show you how to create the application that I made. Spit spot. This part two is going to focus mainly on enemies and then we're going to get more into the collisions of things and by the end of this tutorial series I will have the application that's actually on the app store right now. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so if I haven't made this already clear, you need to go watch the original video of Circular Shooting with Swift and Xcode. I will link that right now, and you should see it in the top right corner of your screen. And just go click on that, and that will get you to the point that we will start at. So now let's open up our project and go over to Shooter, Shooter.Xcode Project. And now let's head back into our game scene.swift. Now inside of our game scene.swift, if you were to build and run our application right now, first thing you'll notice is that the main ball and the small ball are both white. And I don't want them both to be white. I want them both to be different colors. So I'm going to go to over to my main ball and I'm going to say main ball dot color will be equal to, and I'm going to make this equal to a UI colored open parentheses, and this is going to be an RGB value of 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and a blue value of 0 0.2 with an alpha of 1.0. This makes it a dark gray color. If you were to build and run this right now, it would still appear white. So we need to say main ball dot color blend factor, meaning how much of this color that we create right up here, how much of that is going to blend into the original ball file that we created in the first video. So we need to say main ball dot color blend factor will be equal to 1.0, meaning that the color that we created right here is going to overtake our whole object. So let's build and run this right now, and you should see that our main ball dot color will be equal to a dark gray color and we are shooting white balls right now. Now, I want the balls to be blue, so I'm going to go down here to my small ball, and I'm going to say small ball dot color will be equal to, and this is going to be a UI color, open parentheses, and this is going to be an RGB value of 0 0.1 with a green value of 0 0.65 and a blue value of 0 0.95 with an alpha of 0.1.0. Meaning that this color is, is is totally visible, and then we need to say small ball dot color blend factor will be equal to 1.0. And now, if we were to build and run this, you shall see that we have a gray ball in the middle, and we are shooting blue dots like so. Now, of course, you can play around with these numbers, get lighter colors, and do whatever you want. But I'm going to make it like that. I'm actually going to change the green value to 0 0.85. That way, we get a nice little aqua blue color, just a lighter blue color. And now if I were to shoot, we get a nice blue color like so. Again, play around with your RGB values and you'll get the colors that you like. Now one thing you'll notice is that this background color is a gray color, and I don't think that looks good, so I'm going to go to my did move to view, and I'm going to change that background color equal to a UI color dot white color. Now of course you can change that to whatever you want, I'm just going to make mine a white color. Build and run. And now you will see a white color and we are going to shoot blue balls like so. Now, next thing we need to do is spawn enemies. So let's head back over to our project and head into our game scene.swift. Now down here inside of our game scene.swift, I'm going to say func enemies. So we're going to create a function that will be called, and this function is going to create enemies in random positions around the screen that are going to fly towards the main ball in the center. So I'm going to say func enemies, open parentheses, close parentheses, open curly bracket, enter, close curly bracket. And inside of that, I'm going to create my enemy. So I'm going to say let enemy equal an sk sprite node, open parentheses, and this is going to be an image named ball. So they're just the balls that are going to be flying towards us, but we're going to change the color of them to a red color right after we set the size. So let's say enemy.size will be equal to a CG size, open parentheses, with a width of 20 pixels by 20 pixels. So it's going to be a perfect circle. And the circle comes from the image that we created in the first video. Inside of our images.xc assets, you will see this ball right here, and that is being applied to our enemy. Now the color of our enemy, I'm going to make this equal to an enemy dot color will be equal to a UI color, and this is going to be a, an RGB. Now of course you can't just say UI color dot red color, but I'm going to do an RGB value. So my RGB value will be 0 0.9 as my red, green will be 0 0.1, and my blue will be 0 0.1 as well. 
and then my alpha I'm going to set that equal to 1.0 and now I need to apply this color that I just created to my enemy so I'm going to say enemy dot color blend factor will be equal to 1.0. Now next thing we need to do is determine where around this screen are we going to spawn our enemy. So I'm going to make these enemies appear at random from all around the screen. So I need to head over to my enemies function and first thing I'm going to do is create a random number. So let's say let random position number equal and this is going to be an arc for random percent four. So basically this is picking a random number between zero and three. So it's going to either pick zero, one, two, or three. And in total, that is four numbers, but it starts at zero. Now, next thing we need to do is create a switch case. Now, basically what this means, like in the case that the random position number is equal to zero, we want to, to deploy the enemy over on this left side here. Or if it's one, then the top here, bottom here, and the right, so on and so forth. So we're going to set that up right now by just saying switch random position number, open curly bracket, enter close curly bracket. And in the case that this is zero, so I'm going to say case zero colon break right after that. And then I'm going to have the case of one colon break. So if it's not one, then it's going to move on to the next thing. So case two colon and then break. So in the case that it's not two, we're going to break over to three. So case three colon break. And lastly, if it is not any of these cases, we're going to say the default case is colon and then break. And there you have it. So we are going to switch according to what this random number is right here. So in the case that this is zero, I'm going to make it position itself randomly over on this side of the display. So I'm going to go over to my case zero and I'm going to say enemy dot position dot x will be equal to zero. So it's automatically going to place it right over on the left side of the screen. And then we need to determine a random Y position, basically where along this side of the screen is it going to spawn from. So let's head back over to our case zero and I'm going to say var position Y will be equal to, and this is going to be an arc for random underscore uniform. Now inside of this arc for random underscore uniform, it's expecting a UINT32 value. So we're wanting to basically pick a random value that's along the frame.size.height. So basically how tall is this screen and we're going to pick a random value off of that size. So inside of this, I'm just going to say UINT32, open parentheses, and this is going to be our frame.size.height, like so and then close off with the parentheses. And now we want to set our enemy Y position equal to this random Y position that we just created. So I'm going to say enemy dot position dot Y will be equal to, and this is going to be equal to our CG float. So meaning that it's not going to be a perfect integer value, meaning one, two, three, or four, it's going to be 1.2, 1.3, and so on and so forth. So CG float open parentheses, and I'm going to put position Y, like so, and close that off. So now this is going to spawn our enemy at a random position along this left side of our scene. Now we need to go through all the other cases. Now we need to add that enemy onto our scene. So just say self dot add child, and this is going to be enemy. And now we just need to copy and paste whatever we have in case zero, and we're gonna put that right into case one. And we're just gonna change enemy dot position dot Y equal to zero. So it's going to now spawn at random at the top here and I'm going to change the var position y equal to var position x, and this is going to be an equal to an arc for random underscore uniform uint32, and this is going to be our frame dot size dot width, like so. So it's picking a random value along the width of our scene. Then we can say enemy dot position dot x will be equal to our position x. And then we will add that child or the enemy accordingly. Next thing we need to do is I'm just going to copy and paste whatever's in case one and put that right inside of case two. But this time we want it to spawn from the bottom. So in, in order for us to spawn it from the bottom of our scene, I'm going to say the enemy.position.y will be equal to frame.size.width. 
So now it's going to make the enemy.position.y equal to the bottom here, and then it's going to pick an x value accordingly at random. And we already have all of that program, so now we can just head right into case 3. And this time we're actually going to take the case 0 and just copy and paste that right into case 3. And now inside of this case 3, we're going to change the enemy.position.x equal to our frame.size.width. And I just realized I switched this up. This should be enemy.position.y equals the frame.size.height. Sorry. So now we have case 2. It's going to pick a random value at down here. And now case 3 is going to pick a random value over on the right side. And right now, if we were to build and run this, nothing would actually happen. So we need to go over to our did move to view. And we're going to create a timer. So before we go into the did move to view, let's create the timer so that it's public and that we can invalidate it later. Say if you lose the game, we're going to invalidate this timer so that no other enemies come. So right above our did move to view, I'm going to say let enemy timer equal, and this is going to be an ns timer. And then open parentheses, close parentheses. And now inside of our did move to view, I can say enemy timer equals an ns timer dot scheduled timer with time interval. And this is the one that's going to have the time, the target, the selector, the user info, and repeats. So our time, I'm going to make this equal to 0.5 right now, although we will work with that a bit more as we want it to be more difficult as the time goes on. Our target, I'm going to equal self, meaning that it's going to affect our scene itself. And then we have the selector, so I'm going to type in capital S, selector, like so open parentheses, and this is going to be an open quotation mark, close quotation mark, and inside of these, we're going to type in enemies. Or basically, we're calling the function that we created right down here. So now this is going to call our enemies function right down here any time, every 0 0.5 seconds. And then just close that off with our parentheses. User info, we will not require any user info, so click nil, type in nil, and then repeats, we're going to set this equal to true. And right now we're getting this error that says cannot assign enemy timer in self. We need to go back up to our let enemy timer equal ns timer and just change that to var. As that will, that'll allow us to change the timer later on. Now let's build and run. Now as you can see, the enemies, you can see one right down here, they are appearing on our scene like so, but the problem is they don't have any actions to perform, so we don't really see them on the scene. So we need to go right down here on our enemies function and to say enemy.runAction, and we're going to run an sk action dot move to, and we are going to move to the location of our main ball dot position, and then this duration, we're going to make this duration equal to three. Now we will be playing with that duration a bit more later on, but right now we're going to set it equal to three. Now let's build and run. And now as you can see, we have our enemies flooding in like so. So they are coming in from every corner and they're moving at a pace of three seconds from where they spawned. And they're moving to the center. Now one thing you will notice is that they are overlapping our main ball. I don't want this to happen, I want our main ball to be the foreground and all of these other balls that are flying around to be the background. So I'm going to set the Z position of my main ball equal to 1.0. So let's go back to our main ball up here in our did move to view and I'm going to say main ball dot Z position will be equal to 1.0 and this just puts it slightly above all the other balls that we have. And now, as you can see, we have all of our balls flooding in like so, and they are going behind the main ball. Now in part two, I will focus more on the collisions of things, as you can see. Right now, I can shoot at those balls, but nothing actually happens. So that'll be in part two. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more tutorials like this from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. If you want to follow me on social media, here are all the links, and they're also in the description down below. Anyway, I will see you in the next one.